Nashville, Tennessee, Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you so much for all the love. It was great to see you all out there. I really appreciate all the support. I am bringing the Night Pants Nation tour to Boston, March 31st to April 2nd, and Minneapolis, April 28th through the 30th. Get your tickets for those shows and all shows at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. I want to say, as I do every week, thank you for your support here. Um, please hit the subscribe button on the YouTube, y'all. How can I help the show? Ryan, I don't have a lot of money. It's free. You're watching it right now. Hit the subscribe button. It means nothing to you. It means everything to all of us, all right? The Patreon is going nowhere. The honeydew with y'all is one of my favorite things to do. I love my job and y'all have not let me down. If you or someone you know out there has that story that has to be heard, please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. Okay. It's five bucks a month. If you sign up for a year, you're getting over a month free and you're getting the honeydew a day early ad free at no additional cost. All right. You guys know what we do over here. We highlight the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. Today's guest, first time here. Very excited to have him on the honeydew, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, Rory Scovel. Welcome to the <laughs> honeydew, Rory. Yeah, thank you. This is a long time. Thanks coming, for dude. having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. I don't, I don't like eating honeydew. That's and the I whole just point. realized that whole picture behind That's you. That's the whole point. Just staring at it. It's like a, a perfectly taste good fruit. You're that right. People just throw the fuck away. And people love it. People like yeah. that. They this like cantaloupe. You see this one? Uh. Somebody at their job caught this guy <laughs> passing up perfectly good honeydew. <laughs> <laughs> He's going for the candle. He said, fuck it. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and that one right there, the honey do with the cigarette at yeah, the middle. Exactly. That's the that's sticking everything. around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm well good. This makes me feel like I, I <laughs> fit right it's like in. A hug in here, bro. <laughs> like a hug. That's a perfect welcome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, excuse me. First, before we begin, please plug, promote everything and anything you'd like. You got it. Uh, I myself have a podcast with Daniel Van Kirk called uh, Pen Pals, the Pen I've Pals podcast. So uh, wherever you get your podcast, which I don't know where even those places are, but wherever that is, uh, look us up. Give us a go. See if you like what we're doing. Um, and then I'm on a show called Physical. On Apple TV Plus with yeah, uh, Rose Byrne. So I'd say those two things. All right. What about your social media, website, any of that stuff? At Rory Scovel for all that stuff. RoryScovel.com. But I have not, I'm not like you. I have not been on the road in so long. I don't even know if I can fully remember what that space even feels like. Wow. So if someone does go to RoryScovel.com, look past the fact that it's not updated in any way. And also, don't go to the tour dates and see that I probably haven't even deleted things from 2018. Like, oh, he's coming to Toronto. Ah, look at that year. Look at the year before you buy. Click buy. You got a look lot of expiration year. dates. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not like you. I've never been in a movie or a series. So see what I mean? You don't need yeah. a .com. Maybe yeah. you don't need the .com. I don't know if any of us needed any. I feel it's like, like social phone, media is you know the I mean? new like free space to just, you know. Yeah, I think if you go on TikTok and you say, I'm in Vancouver. Hoover, that almost hits more people than the the dot com. It probably I think. does, but I don't know how to play. I, I there's a part of me that feels like I don't know how to play this new game of. I was already bad at promoting myself. Then the game changed for someone who already wasn't doing the old way. So there's a part of me that's like, well, maybe the new way works for me, and then that's when I stop having any tour dates. So <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't got to experiment yet <laughs> to see if it you works or not. shift it in the car. It's like, Gah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll see. I'll get back out there. I'll get I'll get on the road. Well, you have a very interesting backstory. I do remember from the Crab Feast talking about this a little bit, but there's so much more that's happened, obviously, since then that we're going to get into. Yeah. But death, uh, un unfortunately, you, like myself, very familiar with death very early on, but you very early on. So your yeah. mom died on your first birthday. My mom passed away on my first birthday. Okay, uh, how? How did your mom pass? She had Hodgkin's disease. Okay. Uh, so cancer. And uh, now, um, can I ask, did she 
did she know that while she was pregnant or was that something that happened but in the year she she had you yeah it, that it's it's interesting because and I feel like maybe you can relate that but a lot of people can relate to this if you've lost someone at a young age the story that you start to get has to come from people and especially for us uh you know in the in the 80s came from people who maybe were like, well, just tell him whatever. Right. It doesn't matter. Like I, which I would have done that. Mis- I would have made that mistake too. But yeah, for me, I, from what I can understand is that, uh, she was diagnosed, had like, was pregnant with me. That's my understanding. And, um, was given the option to go through chemotherapy, uh, but was told that I definitely was going to, it would, it would have taken my life. And so she didn't do So your it. mom literally gave her life for you. She literally gave her life. She said, uh, she, uh, from what I'm told, this, this is how we're starting. Oh but I, I have, uh, I, listen, yeah. if your life started this way, <laughs> the episode this is, this started this, is, this yeah, way. This is how things start. <laughs> there's good spots. Sometimes there's good spots right in the middle. You get to the middle of a jelly donut. That's a fun space to be. But to get there, you're like, this is a little dry. <laughs> <laughs> and he's day old. <laughs> but I, I, I've oh, had family wow. members, uh, aunts and close family friends of my parents uh, who, you know, they said that she was like, no, my son will have a chance. And, you know, someone tells you that. I, I think the first time someone told me that my mother had said that when she had refused to do chemotherapy was, I want to say I was like late teens, early 20s, but maybe late teens. and. I mean, it, it's, I'd say that moment in her life before I was even born is what pushed me to decide that whatever I was going to do with my life, I was like, th- building off of that, that inspiration, I was like, I, I don't think for me, if I have a job I don't like, then I think I wasted this moment mm-hmm. that someone, someone made this ultimate sacrifice um, and so I'm like, you know, so then I want to do something big. Of course. And I, it, it's so interesting. I mean, how these, all these things tie together, you go, oh, I want to do something big. And so for me, it just happened to be, oh, I, you know, I'm funny. I'm a class clown. I do this. And then you stumble into stand up, and then suddenly you're like, oh, this is actually kind of got some traction, but you know. In those first three years, you don't know what that kind of traction is. Three. Well, well, I mean, well, I mean when you're starting I mean, to go 19. up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Still today, I have yeah. tour dates, yeah. and I'm like, I got to make my life special. Like, Rory, you haven't updated your website. <laughs> go, Daddy's still sending you reminders, bro. Yeah, Rory, you got to pay for your website. Your mom forewent chemo. Well, I can't. I'm busy right now. I can't do it today. I'll get <laughs> I'll call some clubs oh, soon, but um, yeah. What well, you know? There's this that this motivation in the back of my mind to be like, well, I have to do something big and extraordinary, and it it isn't until now at, at 41 that I've kind of been like, well, I don't I don't really know what that ever even meant. Uh, this like, you know, like oh, I'm a I'm a stand up, and I got to do something on Live at Gotham, or I make money going on the road or or the opportunities that we get in this business, you almost step back and you're like, well, only now am I like, well, is that the big thing that I thought it would be? Because I think I just, I think I'm just lucky to have a really cool, fun job. I Man, I <laughs> resonate hard with that. That's it. Like I say all the time, like we're hearing about all these fucking child predators and rapists and shit in our our job, okay? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right? But if we worked for FedEx and that was one of the top drivers, I'm supposed to rally for that guy because <laughs> he's a good FedEx delivery guy? I right. mean, get the fuck out of here. Right, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. What are you talking about? <laughs> I get that what we do is different. It's unique. Yeah. Maybe it's special. Yeah. There's a different thing. But at the end of the yeah. day... We are the people the theater kids don't want to hang out with. Yeah. We are the fucking bad news bears. We are the misfits. And there is yeah. something fucked up and mental and lovable and funny and fun about us. Yeah. Okay. But I'm right there with you. Yeah. That is who we are. Yeah. Period. It may, it kind of makes you I, – I, I think uh, it, it really puts it in place that you go, oh, this is – I'm lucky – 
that I have this job and, and the fact that it is a job in the past two years has taught us, you know, gratitude in a huge way. But at the same time, hopefully the reason why, you know, I, I think you're successful and many of our friends are successful and people we don't know who are successful is because you can tell that it's just it's actually their personality is there's something ingrained in them that says, I'm not afraid of 300 strangers. I'm not afraid of this joke working or not or working. Not, yeah. I'm not afraid of what I'm wearing. The things that some people, I think when they go, I could never get on stage. It's like, because the 10 things you're thinking about aren't even, those don't even cross our mind. We literally are chasing a drug that's already built into us yes. to go for it. It isn't us going, you know, oh yeah, I think I got, you know, it, when you have a new joke, that's like a drug that you can't even... I had a driver in Kansas City that drove me to the club, and the guy, I'm not going to do it now, but he literally says, he keeps saying he's from Wisconsin. So I'm like, okay, this guy wants me to ask why. <laughs> I go, so what brought you to Kansas City? And he goes, you want the prison version, or do you want the I'll follow the woman version? I was like, I definitely want the prison yeah. version. So I have a new five-minute fucking story about the the felon, the federal felon who yeah. robbed banks right. uh, that drove me to the club now. Yeah. 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 So, all right, let's talk about a few things here. Yeah. How old was your mom when she passed? 25. Holy fuck. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that really changes you too. You might have gone through this because when At you hit 42, that age, uh, dude. when you hit that age, you go, fuck, that's way younger than I've ever pictured in my life. What are you doing at 25? What's Roy, what's 25-year-old Rory Scovel doing? Just give me a, something during the day. I pot, definitely smoking pot, skipping, I, you know, if I'm at work. This what is what is, I was what doing. So I, yeah. I lived in D.C. Okay. Um, and I was doing, I worked for, a, I was a government, worked for a government contracting uh, firm, uh, contractor with the uh, um, Irving Burton Associates, IBA. Oh, yeah. And it was like medical stuff for like vet, veterans and, and things. But I was just like a secretary, desktop support specialist. But it was, I was just a secretary. I went and ran and I got, I got supplies. I made sure the DSS. covers. Were, <laughs> yeah. Call it DSS. All right. Yeah, I know yeah, secretary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right, you're the desktop support specialist, right? Yeah. The printer needs paper. Uh, exec oh, okay. Uh, executive DSS. <laughs> yeah, the printer. My pen needs ink. Go, can you give me another pen? You got it. Somebody left the cap yeah. off these yeah. sharp. Yeah, let me get those. Yeah, I got, I let me get those because I'm a specialist. Got a rainbow pack. Right here, Spe right. Yeah, specialist in anything Fox is a red flag. But I... Uh, yeah, so that's what I did. I that's what I was doing in uh, in DC. But Listen, you know, that's under the desk. I am specifically yeah. desktop. This is how <laughs> my my, do, my job was when I took calls. I had to put a notch of how many calls we got that day, and I just transferred calls. My boss was the greatest boss ever. Everybody knew I did stand up. They thought, oh, that's great. I, in one of my yearly reviews, I said to my boss, I was like, you don't need someone doing this. I was like, you could get a machine to answer it. And he was like, you're the first person to ever come in here to explain to me why you shouldn't have a job. <laughs> he goes, you do stand up. He goes, do you want me to really write this down and take this to the higher ups? Like, hey, we should get a robot. And I was like, oh, I guess, I guess not. <laughs> and that's what you're doing. And your mom is deciding to forego chemo at Ex 25. Exactly. Like, what a fucking decision. Exactly. So what, it, so in that space of being 25, I was also, that's when I started stand-up, was uh, 24, 24, I think, 23, 24. Um, and that's when I started getting on stage. So there's this part of me that's living this life of like, do I have the audacity? Would I ever have the, the courage, the bravery to ever say that to a doctor if I was in that position? But then there's this, there's this part of me that's like, I have a responsibility to pursue my own joy and happiness because of you know. someone gave you that yes. key. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think all the time too. It doesn't. It's not important to me to be famous. It's not important to me to be any of that stuff. But what was important to me too is I literally had my father and grandmother who gave their life for us and. There's no way I'm going to waste it. So yeah. part of me isn't just doesn't just want to um, do what I want to do and do it to its fullest because they were like, go live the life you want to live. Yeah. But the other part of me wants to keep them alive in some way and tell their stories. And I'm, I'm glad and fortunate to be able to uh, tell stories in my stand up and podcast that, right. that have kept people kept them alive, at least for right. me. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to talk about them and shit like that. So, yeah. All right, let's dial it back a second here. Your mom's 25. Your dad's 20. Uh, I believe he was 25. 
25 going on 26. They're married? Yeah. And is this their first child together? I'm their, I'm their second. Second. So my sister's a year and a half older than me. Okay. So I don't know when she specifically found out that she yeah, had Yeah, you guys this. are pretty quick back to back yeah, there. Yeah. I, I don't know when they're like, oh, yeah, you are you have this long to live. I don't even remember if that was like a thing. All anyone's ever told me now is they're like, oh, yeah, the treatment she could have had now would be... You know, she would have survived. She would have lived. But at the time, they didn't know, you know, it's always such a evolving sort of game with cancer, I guess. It's, you know, you don't know what treatments they're going to uncover and what they won't. So basically, your dad is the diary of your mom for you. Okay. Yeah. Let me, we're going to get to that. But I have yeah. this one question. Is there anything that sticks out that anyone in the family or one of her friends told you about her? Like... um Something you're like, that's fucking cool to know. You know, it's it not it, not even that long ago because I haven't ever really known uh, my you're mother. One, you don't. Yeah, nothing. There was one time I was at my grandparents' house, her parents, uh, and they they were like, you know, we have all this film, and I was like, what? Wait, what do you mean? And they're like, yeah, because we had a camera. We were upset. My grandfather was obsessed with. It. He had like the film camera, no audio, but like film. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know, we have a lot of this of your mom. And I was like, I've never seen her in motion. Like, this is absurd. And I was like, do you have a projector? And they were like, yeah. So I remember being at their house one day and I'm putting the projector together. I mean, I'm like jacked and I couldn't, the projector wouldn't no. work. It was like broken. Real to real. So I had all, yeah. And I had all of those and they were just in this box and I didn't live in in my hometown of Greenville at the time. So I was like, all right, well, let's, we'll keep these here. I got in touch with my cousin. I said, can you find someone? I'll pay for all of it. Go get all this transferred digitally. And it, not that long ago, we got all of that transferred. My sister and I got to see her like movement, which oh, is like... what's that, What was that it, like? It's strange because it's like, uh, I, I mean... I don't know what it would be like to hear her voice. I think I don't think that'll be something I'm ever able to do. I don't think in eighty one, you know, I don't I don't know what she would have had. You know, any home video stuff they had, home cameras, it Set, wasn't recorder. it was just a, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if she if there's anything that exists. But um that was a moment, but then also maybe in twenty eighteen I went and got coffee in Charleston, South Carolina with because I was doing a show there, get this random email. A friend of hers from high school is also in town. And she was like, I was friends with your mom. And I have a letter that she wrote me no. before she passed away. And uh, she's like, I'd like to just sit and meet you and chat. And so I was like, this has never happened. This is great. So I went and sat down with her and her husband. And we chatted. And she was showing me some pictures that she had in this letter to like see my mother's handwriting it's it's sort of a testament to what we do and and what other artists i think do but like reading her writing is the only way i think i've i will probably ever hear her voice is that one letter that i've i've now read but she said your mom used to like steal shit <laughs> like what <laughs> she used she said well there's one picture we went to to disney world and she goes, your mom, uh, she goes, this is just after us stealing stuff from the gift shop. Oh, she was like petty theft shit. <laughs> yeah, like it. tiny shit that didn't matter. <laughs> and I got to say, like, you know, everyone building her up to me as your mom was perfect. She did yeah, right, this. They, right, don't, right, they don't right. tell you the real thing. And I got to say, it was the most, it was like the first moment that I felt this this thing of of real. Where I was like, was that's person. her. Yeah. I was like, I, I like, tell me. The, More the of fucked that. up thing she said or did, like, give me, give me that. Mm -hmm. Like, as opposed to perfect, which is just so hard to believe the older you get. And they were also like, uh, she used to uh, help at the high school and work in the office and she would steal all the tardy slips and just give them out to oh, people yeah, that's to be yeah. like, here, just, you can just use these tardy slips. Yeah. And my whole life, because of uh, how my dad, you know, the, the level of discipline and stuff, I lived this fear of doing things wrong. Like I was the kid who in any movie, I was the kid going, I don't think we should do this, yeah, guys. Right, like that yeah. was my whole <laughs> life. Guys, we're going to get in trouble. We're friends are like, what does that even mean? I'm like, well, at my house, it, it's pretty bad. I don't want to fucking get in trouble. So I'd like to not participate. So to find out, <laughs> That she was like this, I'm just like, oh man, I like it's it's there's something kind of fun to know that 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 sort of mischief isn't even in my DNA. Right. It almost feels great. Um, but yeah, that 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 was something recently where I was like, oh, this is it. It really made me go, well, fuck. Now I really want to know this person that I'll never know. 
you know, mm-hmm. and then trying to figure out uh, how to do that is, you know, it's 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 intense because there's one the one guy who I could talk to to go, hey, who is this woman? Is my dad and my sister and I, you know, we'd check in with each other all the time even as two people not knowing how to talk to each other about, Hey, our mom's dead. So how does that make you feel? <laughs> you know, you know, right. you don't know how to talk about it with anybody really. You're 41. You said, right. Yeah. And you're a dad. How old you're, if you have a son, right? Yeah. Uh, my daughter, she's daughter. six. Yeah. Okay. Well, six. Oh, we are the same. Close. Yeah. All right. So your daughter's six, you're 41. Your dad's basically 25. Yeah. He's now he's a widow. Yeah. His wife has just died of cancer. Yeah. He's left with basically a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Yeah. What happens? And can you, by the way, can you imagine being 25 fucking years old? You know what? And all that's going on while you're also trying to figure out yeah. how to raise a boy and a girl. Yeah. I. It's so funny to me. I'm not funny. I, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe it is kind of funny. But what, well, what does happen at that time is that his younger, younger sister, um, he was one of five kids. He was the oldest. So the next kid in line, my aunt Connie, uh, she stops college and moves in with okay. us. And so it's my dad, my aunt, and my sister and me. Um, and it's it the, it's strange because losing your mother at one is something you you can't mentally understand. But I fully believe in the. Uh, the connection that you do have. And I think there is something that does happen where you, you're the, the cells in your body or something are fully aware that a trauma has occurred, whether you, you, you can digest oh, that as no, a person. I, I believe that you know it, you just sure. know it. It's just the something. Energy. Yeah. There's, there's an no energy denying. and you're like, that's gone, but you don't know what that even means. Right. Uh, and then my aunt moves in with us and it's hard to look back on or weird to look back on and, and realize that, while people are explaining your reality to you, which is how we all live, someone has to also explain to you, you no, know, your mother, you you don't have a mother Ever. because you don't understand that because you I've immediately shifted to, oh, this is my this woman, this is this woman and this man. These are my two, but this is my, you know, you're like a dog. You're like, right. what's my pack? Right. Where do I stand right. in the pack? Yeah, and where, yeah, and yeah. The, so it was like, oh, this is the pack. And of course, you know, when you think about some, you try to find some positives. I mean, I had, I had a great family, a big family. My dad's one of five kids. So like, obviously everybody realizes like all hands on deck, like these two kids and what they're going through. Like we're a family, we're going to be together. We're going to, you know, come in. And that's my perception. Granted, my dad at the time could have been like, I wish everyone would have fucked off. Or I didn't think so. I didn't think so-and-so did enough. Like right, I didn't yeah, see it. Like, I'll tell I you what. Yeah, Vicky was <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know it. You know it. <laughs> she should have been there. Like, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm, you know, one. Colleen so. was there. <laughs> Colleen quit college. Yeah. <laughs> Vicky, you don't even send gifts. <laughs> don't even send gifts. You didn't send gifts. I saw at the funeral. They still went around with the collection plate. <laughs> you didn't even contribute. You didn't contribute. Got a collection plate at a funeral. I don't even. Do Catholics do that? God, that's gotta be like, if Catholics. Like, hey, I know this, hey, but still, it's right still it's give fine. a little bit. It's fine. It's gonna be okay if you give a little bit. Yeah, you gotta give to get. You gotta give to get, folks. Get a couple extra years on your soul if you throw a couple bucks. <laughs> Yeah, so that was that was oh, that became man. our our that became my reality. And so, I, as a kid, I don't understand at all in any capacity what my dad is is going through. There's no listen, there's no chance. Even even when you're 25, how the fuck could you unless no. you go through that? No, okay. But yeah, what yeah. what age do you start remembering people sort of formulating the story for you? And who was it? Yeah, I I don't know. I. I don't, I, my assumption, and I'd have to ask family members like, hey, right away, were you guys constantly informing us that Aunt Connie is not your mom? Because no matter what, whether I was told that, you start to form a bond with a maternal, there's a maternal thing happening there, even for her, where we aren't her kids, sure, but she's yeah. now a mother to two kids that aren't her kids. Uh, it's, it's, I'm sure it's a strange place to be, but we were, you know, my assumption was like, you're my person. 
you know, that that's where my soul was. And then my dad remarried when I was in the second grade. And so then that there was just this, a sudden shift where that my aunt now was like, all right, back to school to finish my, you know, degree to become a teacher. And now here I am with living with a stepmother. And it's that is a such a strange space to be in that I've I've said that to my sister and so, I mean, my that's wife. A different I've, kind of divorce. Why well, yeah, where I've I've told people I'm like, I don't I don't think I don't know if our family re- if it registers for our family, maybe it does, that that is two traumas. That is kind of like losing two moms. Because my mom, yeah. Yeah. And I I I I have so many I have so many memories of my aunt coming to visit. And, you know, we're in, I, I remember there's one time, and this is where my memory gets a little hazy because I know for a fact I was in the first grade, but I also know that she had already moved to Florence, South Carolina. But I also know that my dad got married in second grade. So I don't know, that I'm, I'm hazy in, in, in the timeline of why and what. But I remember one day she took us to school before she was going to drive back to Florence. And we were just parked in the car and just sitting there and you you know this space we are, everybody knows this space you're sitting there and you're in the sad moment and you know that I was in first grade and I I can like remember just kind of like almost shaking like oh I know she's about to leave and this to me is my mother right and I know she's about to leave and I'm I'm going to get worked <laughs> up here but we get out of the car um to walk to the the lines, you know, you get in before you go into the school. And I just remember I dropped all of my stuff and I looked at her and I was like, I don't want you to go. And I think back now, like, fuck, how? I think one for me, like, that's a traumatizing moment. Yeah. But her, I think in that moment, like, I relate to that more now where if my daughter said that to me, like, and for whatever reason, I don't want you to leave. Oh, I, I don't know what I I, like. It's almost like someone just stabbed you. Yeah. And you, you don't even scream. You just are like in this shock of it. But I remember dropping all my stuff. I'm crying. I'm like, I don't want you to leave. And she's like, I got to leave. And then whatever transpires, I end up getting in the line. I remember being in school, I'm crying and, I don't even know what, if I, only now do I look back at this, like, even if you're the teacher and someone goes, well, you know, his mom died on his first birthday. This aunt moved in to take care of him. Anyway, she's got to go back to work. So anyways, he's sad about that. I, if if you're the teacher, are you just like, hey, here's a pile of candy because I can't even fat. Like I was yeah. over here going, oh, I forgot to. I'm 36 and I've never gone. I'm over here going, my VCR is broken. <laughs> Yeah, That's right, what yeah. I thought that was a thing. But now this kid's yeah. six. Yeah. And so I think I feel stuff like that even more because like I just said, my daughter is in that age and I, I constantly <laughs> record where she's at in her life and where me I was too. at. And it gives me this strange trauma that doesn't relate to her. But I experienced through where I'm like, oh, that's where I almost start to cry. Like on her first birthday, I cried in bed and my wife was like, she, I remember I got home, I was probably doing a spot or something and I got home and the next day was her birthday party and her first birthday. And I was just crying. And I remember my wife being like, what, are you okay? And I was like, I only now know what one year looks like. Right. I now know, oh, you were born 365 days and that's it. And it's a fine, it's, it's almost like, a I've been thinking about it number, you since know? you've been talking. Like, let's yeah. think about your mom for a second. This is a 25-year-old woman yeah. who knows she's dying. Yeah. And there's a moment in her life where she looks at you guys for the last time or knows yeah. she's never going to see you guys grow up or anything. And I'm yeah. just over here thinking that is a parent right now. Like, oh, yeah, the fucking... Like, so, if cancer isn't bad enough, you know what you I know mean? You know what like, they, they told me? And this is what's interesting to me, too. And everyone kind of develops their story. My aunt told me, and my Aunt Connie told me this at one point. Mm. She goes, so you, she goes, your mother collapsed in the bathroom of the, the hospital room that she was in because um, she had a heart attack and she collapsed. Oh. And so I remember when she told me that, I was like, so did she die of a heart attack? And my aunt goes, not to me. To me, it was the cancer that killed her. And I remember going... <laughs> That is so important that it it 
you know, nothing against my aunt, but I remember it made me angry to decide that this story that matters so much to who I am and where I come from to decide like, yeah, but I think it was this. Now, as I've gotten older, I look back and I go, you know what? I, I can understand her perspective of the cancer, whatever it was going through, whatever treatment she was doing. I'm sure it made it so weak that, you know, maybe in a normal world, she doesn't have a heart attack at all. Right. So then you go, well, that's what I mean by it taking you. But I just, I, so I say all that to, to say that I don't know if there was ever this last moment of like, Oh, I'm not going to get out of here, and this will take me. I I truly think that my family might have thought. I see. She's going to be fine. Okay. And I think, and this all comes from the story that people tell you that I think we were going to Myrtle Beach. And we were supposed to go to Myrtle Beach, and I, for some reason, I feel like someone's told me a story that we were going to like pick her up to like go mm-hmm. to the beach. So I I'm hazy on what everyone's expectations were of her recovering or not right. recovering, but I do know that. My dad was at home with us. My aunt tells me this and got a I must have gotten a phone call because she goes, I walked in the door and she's like, your dad threw the two of you at me almost like in the most dangerous way you could ever pass two kids off to somebody. He was like, I got to go. He was like out the door and off to the hospital. And man, the older I get, the more I think, what is that? Like, what is that space? When, when you get that phone call, what? I think about it so much now, like, what was that drive from starting your car? No texts. How no are you, nothing. how do you see just the your road? Mind. Just your mind. Yeah. And you, the radio is not on. You're just driving and there's Flying. no, you're just, there's no way you're not looking at it through a stained glass window out your windshield. Like the tears are just taken over. And I, I've thought about that more and more my, as I've aged, my brain ask better questions about sure. what what happened in these moments as opposed to, oh, yeah, he threw it and then he drove off. Right. My brain has now become more of that journalist of like, God, I wonder what that drive was like. A and question it, I never on had that before. Drive, does he know that she's gone and like, yeah, what what's did they the fast tell him forward the of the rest of your life? I've got two kids. How am I going to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Whew. So, what? But your dad was alive, or he died recently. My dad died in June of 2020. Man, so we are very uh, recently. Sorry, four months into COVID, I guess, and he had a heart attack. A heart attack and passed away. Because it also is important to know if your mom died. That if she had that cancer, is that hereditary? Exactly. There's all kinds of things that you need to know, not just for you, but, but heart for your stuff. daughter. My too. grandfather right. had a heart attack. My aunt Connie, who is still alive, she's had a heart attack, and you just go, "Hey, hey heart stuff." She had we a heart need attack. to know. But did she ever get that degree? <laughs> she got that. Degree. Connie got that degree. <laughs> got Way that to go, degree. Connie! <laughs> She got it. She taught. She's retired. She's moved on. She's at the beach. She's doing, <laughs> a little yeah. two-year hiatus yeah, to take yeah. care of you guys. Did she stay present in your life after that? Would you still She's been see very her? present. Yeah. yeah uh, we I know would obviously see her. it was a day-to-day originally. Yeah. yeah. But. We would see her and, uh, and, and spend time with her. And I think my sister and I have sort of a, a unique uh, aunt-niece-nephew yeah, relationship sure, because sure. it's, you know, I mean, the, more so... I mean, to all of us, because we all feel it, but, you know, more so to her because she's she was of an age to really remember that right. time period, whereas my sister and I, it's more something you just feel um, and you kind of maintain over time. But, yeah. Right, so there's was, three phases of things I want to talk about. I want to talk about yeah. your dad first. Yeah. I want to talk about the, your stepmom who came in at the time. I'm just saying this so I don't forget. Yeah. And then I want to talk about, because your mom's parents were alive when she passed, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, you've got... Her parents and your dad is sort of these living diaries to ask questions and yeah. um, start with your dad. Like when, at what age do you remember like a real conversation with your dad about your mom? Never. Never. We never had one. You Were you we always scared to ask? I was terrified. And I was it wasn't that he would shut ask. it down, you just never asked? I He never shut it down. In fact, when I was, when those uh those reel to reels when those got converted to digital and I could actually see video of my of my mother on a on a DVD. Um, I remember I was visiting my sister in Virginia. My dad was there with my stepmom and and I I, think, I can't remember if I was in town doing shows, but I think I was just like, oh, this is kind of bizarre that all of us are up at my sister's place because that just never happens. And she may, maybe uh, I can't remember what it was if it was one of her kids or something. 
But anyways, my sister goes, let's put on one of those DVDs, which was such a, in front of my dad, which was like such a moment of like, is this, ha like I was terrified and excited by it because yeah. I think instinctually as his kids, I think my sister and I always carried this sense of protecting him from that. And I don't, I don't know why, but I think we were all just always like, we know how we feel and we know who you are and how you are. And I think there was this, this place of like, we won't bring this sadness to you. Have you ever just been too damn high? With today's weed, it can be a dangerous game, and we don't always have time to play reefer roulette when we're looking to light up. Dad Grass is reviving the pleasure of the casual smoke so you can chill out without the stress. Dad Grass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-rolled joints are very low in THC and high in CBD so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. Want the toke without the smoke? Daggrass also has a CBD tincture made with the same high-quality hemp. It's easy to dose, and the effects come on smooth. Chill out without getting stoned. It's like having a glass of wine, not the whole bottle. All Daggrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S., whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Daggrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Daggrass is offering my listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash honeydew. Go to dadgrass.com slash honeydew for 20% off your first order. That's D-A-D-G-R-A-S-S dot com slash honeydew, dadgrass.com slash honeydew. A lot of people didn't even make resolutions this year, and you know what? I get it, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't still find a way to shake things up, whether it's by switching up your workout routine or going someplace new. Whatever way you challenge yourself this new year, there's no better way to do it than with the pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring audio with you because no matter how you shake things up, literally, no matter how you shake, you know they won't fall out of your ears. Their everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. There's also awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings so you can take Raycons with you wherever you go. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me, mine never fall out. I know you guys are loving Raycons. They wouldn't keep coming back if you didn't. So that's a testament to itself, all right? Raycons offer eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, and they're priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycons Everyday Earbuds have over 48,000 five-star reviews. Right now, Honeydew listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash honeydew. That's B-U-Y raycon.com slash honeydew to save 15% on Raycons. Buy raycon.com slash honeydew. Our friends at Manscaped, the global leaders in below-the-waist hygiene, are turning men's shower dreams into their favorite routine with the all-new premium collection. This all-in-one hygiene skin and hair bundle is designed to upgrade the everyday man's shower routine from head to toe. Your skin, hair, and balls deserve this. Save big by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code Honeydew. We're going to use that lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer to clean off any unwanted body hair. The lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof, so you bet it's a major key to the new shower routine. This new bundle will change your life, and I want all of my listeners out there to live their best lives. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Honeydew at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code Honeydew at manscaped.com. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code honeydew at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code honeydew at manscaped.com. It's time to get wet and clean with your new Manscaped shower routine. Now, let's get back to the do. So that moment of her saying, let's, let's watch this was a big deal. And we watched it. And obviously there's tons of video popping Are up. Are you watching of, your dad watch? I'm, I'm, the, you know, I'm doing the like clock, you yeah. know, trying to not turn the head to make it obvious. <laughs> like, yeah, I just want to see how you're reacting. Um, how was know, he? Well, he was fine. I, I think, I, I, I think what, and I don't know this, but I think what happens is, is you, you have, you have to move on. 
you have to go, this was that life, and now this is this life. And I think my dad sat there and he could have easily, I mean, ripe moment to like have asked questions and, you know, say some stuff. I My first tattoo. Nothing like she looks like you or you're not, not getting nothing out of it. Nothing. 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 And, I, and like I said, I mean, it, there's this instinct of going, well, I'm not going to ever push this. Uh, push this issue is your dad in these videos as well like, in look them. there you so are he's, dad. Looking he's, he's not saying like life. i remember that birthday he's not yeah, saying he is, anything. He is he saying is. stuff okay. he's not he's not sitting there shut down okay he is sitting there commenting and, and saying some stuff and i think that made me and my sister feel really good i mean us sitting down and having a conversation with him is something that we've talked about for a very long time in our lives and you and never try to double team him and go f at it we just never set it up it just was this what thing were you that, scared of you said you were scared to death what of what so i i i think hurting him i think seeing him think about it and hurt uh, there's this one time we were at myrtle beach and me, me and my sister and my dad used to like play i mean my dad really focused on making sure like hey i'm gonna be there and we were playing in the in the water i feel like it was like going into the evening sun's like kind of going down and we're just having the best time in the water and my dad just like stopped and i i remember you know when kids got that energy they don't understand like the stop yeah. and i just remember it was like clearly something had just shifted and he got up and 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 that was that was kind of it. It was like sort of this. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in or whatever. And I, I remember being like, oh, I don't like. I think we were both confused if maybe we did something or if we were in trouble. And I, I remember like my grandmother, his, his mother, nuts. yeah, get him <laughs> in the nuts by yeah, accident. Yeah, my, what if it was just that? Maybe like, that. I mean, that hot yeah. cock joke uh, isn't funny anymore, uh, and he's feeling guys it. Head in, guys. guys, in my head in. I can't. I got a stray I heel. I got a stray heel, guys. I can't feel my <laughs> guys. I gotta get. I gotta lay down. <laughs> lay down. I gotta lay down, guys. But my grandmother, <laughs> my grandmother said uh, uh, to us so casually. She's like, "I heard your dad lost uh, your mom's ring in the ocean." And that he Did had he that around his neck. He had it on a necklace, oh, just no. threw it. And the whatever the necklace had come off, or whatever. And I just remember, I, think I then started to play that back in my mind the moment of like him, like, oh, we're having so much fun. And then, like, and it's the ocean, it's gone. And you're like, there's no, there's no finding this. And I, I was so young, so it was definitely so prevalent that that symbol. And I've I've thought about that moment too, where I just like God that the, even that like I you think like well what are, what are the ways like, to bring it up what are the ways to talk yeah. to your dad I got to say for people listening to this who maybe you're in this position and you feel these kind of things I, the day that you will finally figure out how to talk about these things is the day you can't do it and it's not over time it is literally Thanos snapping his fingers yeah. and every question you wanted to know just it unblurs and it is so crystal clear that i realized the day my dad died uh i was like this whole time i've wanted to ask him about uh my mom and it's only now that i realize like oh that isn't the way in the way in was to ask him about him yeah the way in was to say when you were going to the hospital what what were you thinking right and then just listen and go, if if me asking you that isn't the biggest sign, as opposed to, I, I remember I had so much anger of like, don't you understand how important it is for us to know? And I almost put it on him, right. like to pull us aside and go, hey, here's, you know, it's not that he would never mention something. And when my grandparents would come over, right, this he was the, there and it was just like, yeah, I'm, I understand the was situation. Was your dad just that type of, did you have a sex talk with your dad? Never. Okay, my dad so would never in a million years. So he's probably that he's era. He's not that, that guy. Yeah. He's I not that guy. And my dad was also he's not, not give it up. My dad was not a macho machismo guy. My dad was like a clown. He would do jokes. He would look silly. He dressed so badly, but thought he looked great. <laughs> Yeah. And and he also didn't live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's great. That's how you, that's how you should yeah, be. Yeah. I, it also another thing. Like when he passed away, I was like, God, I don't think I ever gave my dad enough credit for doing and living. And and you know, he had obviously we all have our negatives, but some of those positives that I didn't just highlight as positives and go, man, it's great that you. I like I'm embarrassed 
that I have to stand next to you dressed like that because you truly look so crazy. He came to one of my shows at the Charlotte uh, Comedy Zone in, uh, it's cold, it's winter, in uh, crew socks with Adidas sandals. Like he's some sort of fucking soccer player from the nineties like going he, to the he, on, on going to a tournament. <laughs> going to a tournament he's two hours about away. To play. He's about yeah. to put his fucking socks yeah. on. And he's wearing <laughs> basketball shorts and a hoodie. My aunt coaches uh coached uh college basketball. So he's got on the Gulf Coast Commodores hoodie and and just I, I was like, I remember I came out of the green room, I go, stop, I gotta take a picture of you stand right there and he's just like so like, and he and i mean we hung out afterwards we're at a bar and he's dressed like that and i just can't i'm like i, I i'm just like do you know what you look like right now <laughs> my whole you life know you look like. my dad popped his collar my entire life there wasn't a time in my life my dad didn't have his collar popped and I, we made so much fun of him and then here comes the early 2000s where Kids are like popping their collars, and my dad goes, "Who do you think started that? <laughs> who do you think? Who do you think? Who do you think they got that from?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, "I can't even argue this yeah, because that they, yeah, yeah, now that is. is like a look." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, Your dad's uh, got that athleisure. That's what they call it now, athleisure wear. Yeah. That's it. Man. One of his friends from work, uh, when I was home for the funeral and, and just being back home, he. I remember she's like, she, she was like, you know, they don't make them like your dad anymore. She goes, your dad could sit here and talk sports and and get into an argument and 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 get fired up. She goes, and then all the ladies at work. She goes, if they all started talking about some kind of recipe, she goes, your dad's right there talking about the recipe and what Single he dad, would do. Bro. And I, and it, he just, she was like, your dad wasn't. A, a guy she goes your dad was a true gentleman he really was now granted like i said we all have our negatives like your dad was a gentleman but she goes he could transition i mean my dad legit you know he he was a voice uh or 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 cared about uh the voiceless he cared about people that needed help i mean my dad gave blood and plasma all the time i mean his his whole life i've known him to go and do that i mean we had to tell the blood center when he had passed away. I mean, they almost like, oh, that's like a coworker that's yeah. passed passed away. Um, you know, I remember he would. Uh, my brother was telling me this. He would tell kids in our neighborhood who had to wait on the school bus. He goes. He told them, "I don't ever lock my car." He goes. So if it's raining and it's cold and you're that's waiting nice. on the bus, he goes, "Just sit in my car." That's and I'm nice. just like. Like, you would never time out that now. Do, There's shit in your car. Who would do that? <laughs> My dad's shit. car was broken into probably 30 times. <laughs> so he just said, He would fuck. open the trunk. He loved tennis. He would open the trunk where he had some pretty decent rackets. And he goes, look. They didn't even take these rackets. He goes, they took maybe a dollar twenty-five and change and my license. I mean, my dad drove shit cars. Mm. He took pride in the fact that his car was a pile of shit. And he'd be like, who even breaks into this car? He goes, they took this. He goes, <laughs> he goes, I won. I won. I still got the rackets. Like that, that he's that kind of person. So going back to the, like, did we ever have a sex talk? It wasn't my dad going, well, I'm not gonna have a sex talk. I think my dad was uh, embarrassed and wouldn't have known how to talk about it in in general. But you know, I, I have a little bit of that uh, in me in in terms of the emotionally opening up and 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 saying how I feel about stuff. Like I, I definitely probably get a little bit of that from from his DNA, where I I just don't know how to do it, and I yeah. I it is the wildest thing, and it's probably just what life is. But I could do it in a heartbeat now because he's gone, and it's it it you realize how to ask questions about your mom. Suddenly, you realize how to ask questions about him. You realize what you should have celebrated about him to him. You realize what all of the things just, you just see the matrix suddenly. You see yeah. all the fucking green numbers and you're like, oh, that's what I should have done or what I should have said. And so. Not, now, let, let me ask you, all the years, not one thing. What's the, what's the one thing your father said about your mom that's, that sticks with you? No matter what age, I mean, what is there's. I mean, got my to dad would just something. tell stories about high school. Okay, um, so they were high school sweethearts. Yeah. They went all the way back. Okay. Yeah, but it it was never, 
you know, your mom, your mom would do this, or your mom would say this, or your mom would do that. I remember, I think, I, I don't know what the answer would have been, but I, I, there was a part of me that always wanted to just ask him, hey, do you, do you think she would have thought I was funny? Do you think she would have laughed at this mm -hmm. stuff that I do that's, you know, pretty <laughs> R-rated, like this cursing? Like, I, for a while, thought, well, this angel probably would have been like, you, you know, that's for you. Right. And then when I found out that now she was more like that, I was like, she's a oh, she might have really, she might have, she <laughs> yeah, might have been like, you're well, fucking funny it. as yeah, shit. Like I, I might have had this. I mean, my dad, I know, a few more fucks and pussies, yeah. but whatever. You know, my dad. I mean, this is an example of my dad not opening up. I put out a show, uh, Robbie on Comedy Central. Mm -hmm. It ended up being on YouTube. All the all the episodes, and uh, I, it came out in I think in May of 2020. It just got dumped on YouTube because you know pandemic, Viacom fired everybody. Blah blah blah. And, uh, you know, I, all those episodes came out, uh, I got to the funeral and, uh, my stepmother goes, your dad, your dad liked your show. And I was just like, you know, they hit you because there's so much of him in that show specifically <laughs> that I chose like right. moments of things that were meant to be for him and about him to some degree. And, uh. Yeah, uh, she said, oh, she liked her show. And I was like, it, it only dawned on me right there. I was like, oh, I didn't, I, he never told me about it. Like he had a, <laughs> he, had, he had some time to say, yeah. hey, I saw it. You didn't it, even know this. if he watched it. I didn't even know if he watched it. She goes, oh, your dad liked your show. And then I, I remember getting a little bit angry. I go, oh, I wish I would have known that. And then uh, the, the, the funeral, I mean, the amount of coworkers and friends who came up and they were like, your dad wouldn't shut up about, your show, your dad, he, she, he, some friends said, your dad called me every day and asked, have you watched it yet? And I had, you know, they would just be like, Donnie, I'll get to it when I get to, <laughs> when I get to it, my dad, man, all right. And then call the next day, like, well, it drops at midnight. Did you, yeah. Did you watch it? Did <laughs> you watch it? Yeah. You got to watch it. <laughs> and I, I, you know, someone tells you that and I, I, you go, I love that. I love that. But I, I wish, and my regret is like, why well, wish we had that space where my dad called me as opposed to that. I, I, the amount of friends in his life that are like, man, your dad doesn't shut up about you kids. If you told that to me and my, I'm one of seven kids. So me and my sister, and then I have five half siblings okay. uh, when he remarried. They you told five, that, he had five more kids. He had five more kids. Holy shit. They didn't stop. Catholic. Yeah, uh, the Jim Gaffigan bit. We're like five kids, Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> it is, um, but uh, yeah, he. If you told that to any of us, that we would all go. What are you even talking about? Right. Like our dad doesn't pick up the phone to just go. What's going right. on in your life? How's it going? Like you call him, or he, if he calls, or my stepmother would call. Him, oh, your dad wanted to talk to you. Just go. Did you watch the game the other day? Blah blah blah. And you just go, why don't you just pick up the phone and, and call me and ask me this stuff? But then I realized, you know, I didn't I didn't do those things um either. But that that's that's how he was. When people are like, Your dad doesn't shut up about you guys, we're all like, I wish I could have felt that or no. I wish I'd known that two days ago. Yeah. You know. So what second grade your dad remarries for yeah. you? Yeah. What is it like? And and is this stepmom the same lady when he pet that were they they were together the whole time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what um what is that like having her come in? It was strange. It was a strange I mean, I'm sure it was strange for her too. You know, you're talking about people who are who are in their late twenties, you know, because she's younger than my dad. So and she was late two kids. late twenties and taking on two kids who are now uh third grade and second grade. And they dated for I think two or three years, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe more. So it was, she, there was like a slow transition of like, oh, we know who this person is. But now she moves in and um, yeah, I mean, they they had my next sister pretty soon, like a year later, I guess, and then became a, a child making factory. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the relationship uh, uh, is, is fine. I think it's a strange one given all of the circumstances and also my aunt who is still like you know very much we are still her kids in a way yeah, do you feel and, loyalty to her like yeah yeah for sure i think there's a loyalty to my aunt and then also trying to get into this relationship with a stepmother who's yeah. in her late 20s and doesn't you know i i don't think they're i don't know that anyone in my family ever sort of clocked the the trauma 
for what me and my I think they were just like, well, they're kids, or they thought, right. well, you know, they'll be fine. Like we'll spoil them. I don't think people in my family, and I'm, you know, I'm just as guilty probably with my daughter, but really clock, you know, the, the the trauma that we're more aware of now. Like we're just more aware of mental health now and what it means and how you can, you know, be better for yourself and things that you should do. I mean, I've thought so long, like, yeah, we really should have seen a therapist or a psychologist to no just get doubt. us talking about sure. our feelings. Because I think I'd be a different person uh, today. It's only today that I really, I mean, really dealing with the trauma of my mother's death didn't really happen until my daughter was born. And I was like, oh, I'm in it now. And now I realize if you told me that I was going to die and I am looking at my daughter, like that, that's insane. That's, I I mean, that's like a genuine fear that I have because I've lived it. I have it. So I'm like, oh, if something happens to me, I know what that's like. And I wouldn't wish that on someone who, to my face, spit in my face and told me they hate me, I would go, I, I still wouldn't wish yeah. you to know what this ever feels like. It's it's too, it's just a big question mark. So is there any part of you as at, then as a child or even growing up that feels, because I'm asking you this because I did, like a loser, like my mom's gone, here goes Aunt Connie, now this lady's coming in. Do you, you, you ever feel like you don't have your feet under you and you're just like this... You know, yeah, and I, then here come five other kids. Do you feel like a throwaway? No, I don't think that ever. I think there's there's a little bit of that 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 comes and and goes for sure. I mean, I love my my brothers and sisters so much. And I, your dad I, did a really good job making you guys all I, inclusive. I, I think and, so, but I also think I'm sorry. No, go was ahead. he? Have you ever talked to your brothers and sisters? Was he the same way with them? So that's the thing because you gotta you they gotta think and, and you can relate to this where you you think to yourself. You know, if if I'm, you know, my daughter was born when I was 35. Mm-hmm. If I had another kid today and I'm 41, I'm like, well, I'm a different first year dad than I was when I was 35. And you got to think, you know, my my youngest brother, when my dad passed away, was, I think, 22. I, um, I, th- I think that's right. I think he was 22, 21 or 22. And you just think, you know, him and my dad were like buddies. Right. Where we look back and we're like, what is that? How is it like that? And it's like, well, look at my dad's age. I mean, at a certain point, he's like, I, I, it worked out oh, for the others. I'm going to quit sitting here <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, worrying right, about right, it and just yeah. be like, yeah, you. oh, you don't want to go to do the thing that I said to do? I don't fucking care. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? You, yeah, you're totally. just a different person. Yeah. So I think we all probably got a different version yeah. of a dad. But I, I, I've, I, my sister and I have I've thought about it and she sort of presented this idea to me was that, you know, what we didn't get was a dad who sort of aged with us, who understood like, oh, you're in your 30s now. So this is the, this is who I am to you at 30 or you're, you know, I we all had fine relationships, but I think all seven of us are probably sitting here going, man, we're really, there's a, there's a big thing lacking or missing uh, from our psychology of this relationship because, uh, um, because you 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 kept having kids, you had to keep being a young dad to these young kids. While we're like, well, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm 35 now, and I just had a kid, and it's like my dad's like, well, my son's still in high school. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. It's yeah. like that's a good. It's a it's a, it's a weird <laughs> space to be in and yeah. to connect on. You know. Yeah, he's going to the fucking high school. Game. Yeah. Um. All right. So now tell me about your mom's parents. Were you close with them, and and were you able to communicate better with them, or were they sort of not open as as well? Uh, I think it was a different. I think we were in just different spaces. I. It's kind of shocking for them too. I mean, think about you're like, oh, our connection, our liaison to our grandchildren, is gone, and so it's almost like you know they have to make a big effort. To go, hey, we're going to come and pick up the kids. We're going to spend time with the kids. We're going to do stuff and with did the kids. They? And they did. They did oh, it they all did the good. time. They really made it a point to do it. And I, they would obviously talk about my mom. Well, you it's know. all they have left of their child. Like, forget about the liaison. Yeah. You are what they have left of their own daughter. And yeah. that's every fucking parent's nightmare is to right. lose their child. And now you guys are all they have left. So did they stay local your whole life? They stayed local. They yeah, lived in my my hometown. Would, and, you know, they had they had three daughters. My mom was their middle child. And uh yeah, I mean they would they would willingly show us stuff, pictures of our mom, talk about our mom. Did they um, ever have any videos where you heard a voice? No, no, I never. I, I, if that exists, I don't know where it is. It's um, funny you said that. A couple Christmases ago, I went back to Baltimore. I was visiting some relatives, and like we found this VHS. You're not going to believe this. And they put it in my grandmother's on it. I immediately I start crying. Of course. And when I hear her voice, 
it's slightly higher pitched than I remembered it. Yeah. And it blew me away when I started. Uh, for my first thought was, oh, my God, she sounds a little different than my memory. But then I started thinking about it, and I was like, I don't really hear my grandmother's voice. I hear my voice saying what she said in yeah. my head. I've yeah, never yeah. really thought. And then I wondered, I wonder if my dad sounds like I remember my father sounding. And right. all that. I was like, man, it blew me away. It was really, yeah. it tripped me out a little bit. You yeah. Know? Well, you must have stuff of your dad where you can hear, mm -hmm. you know, no, vi no, no video stuff. He died in 89, and I think someone that might have a VHS is also dead at right, this yeah, point yeah, yeah. now. But there's old, um, we had reel quarters. to reel, and it's, um, <laughs> you know, Christmas videos where you don't hear anything, and somebody's putting their hand on the face, and like, ah, you know, that shit, <laughs> right, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Chevy Chase up in the fucking attic on Christmas <laughs> vacation. That's what I have. That's right. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. The, yeah. Um, yeah. So I've watched it, and, and I have that on DVD now, too, as well. But, yeah. um, you know, it, it's... It just sucks. You have all these people there and, and this one woman who's not. Do you have a picture of, of your mom in your home? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have one in your wallet? Is there no, I did oh, my phone. I mean, wallet. now we have everything in our wallet. Yeah, 2022. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I kind of want to go back to that, though. I mean, like, I just, these are my 10 choices. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah these I only are the got 10 I sleeves. The most. Yeah. <laughs> I only got 10 <laughs> sleeves. I got a couple tucked away behind this. I'm not presenting. Yeah, some doubles. <laughs> They're in there in case uh, yeah, I have a car double. accident. They're like, you were in there. <laughs> you were um, in his wallet. <clears throat> Everyone goes trifold. What was it? <laughs> Do you? Have, it was the plastic that was cracked. That one was cracked. It's Velcro. Um, he had a Velcro. <laughs> it was a Def Leppard Velcro wallet. It was brown too. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, yeah. Do you um? Oh, do you have a picture of your mom in your home? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. And yeah. do you talk to your daughter about her? Yeah, I do. I say that I I tell her that's your grandmother and that's my mom. And my mom passed away when I was really young. Now and, you got yeah. a seven year old trying to comprehend. Oh my god! Man, I you want to go? It, like I th I know One. this is a side thing, but our you know I, we rent a, a house. We rented a house in Los Angeles in Eagle Rock, mm -hmm. and our landlord lived in the back house. And was like a grandfather to our daughter. And like, we love this guy. I mean, never raised rent when the pandemic started. He asked me, you guys, okay, do you want me to change? I said, right now we're good. There's no need for you to not have what you need. Mm -hmm. We can, we're fine. Like just to check in like that and say, hey, I know I'm your landlord, but what can we do? Yeah, it's nice. How can we make it work? And we really bonded, especially when the pandemic started. And he... On April 30th of 2020, he had a heart attack and and he passed away. No. And I, I mean, this guy truly, you know, here we are in this pandemic. You've just taken my daughter at four years old. We've taken her out of preschool and said, you you know, you want, you're not going back. And I don't know when you'll see any of those people <laughs> again or those kids who mm -hmm. you were like playing with, your friends. Um, and just we were trying to make the best of it as we could. And, and then, you know, that's a month and a half into, hey, everything shut down. And he had a heart attack. And I... I came back in the the house. Uh, I got off the phone with someone at the hospital who, you know, the hospitals at that time, like, didn't know what to do with COVID. And yeah. so I was like, they're like, he didn't make it. And they're, they were like, I'm not legally supposed to even tell you this. You're not next of kin or anything. And I was like, we live on his property. Can you just help me out? Like, where is he? Is he okay? And they were like, he didn't make it. And I double checked the name and the address and everything. And the guy's like, I'm really sorry to find out this way. I, we're slammed. I got to I gotta get, get off the phone. I was like, you, okay, bye. And I hung up and I went inside and I just collapsed. I think my, if my wife probably had a better relationship with him than I did, but I, everything was just inside of me. It just exploded. And I was just like, I can't, I was like, I, I grew up in this. I was like, I don't want to tell her she's in bed. You know, this is at night. I was like, tomorrow morning, we have to explain to her that he yeah. died. And then what and she's is. four years old. And <sighs> my wife has been reading her this book called Lifetimes that I was like, babe, put that, what are we doing? Put that away. And she's like, it just talks about how bugs and animals and humans. Sure. I was like, it just starts prepping kids. The fact I was, that we got to that next morning, I was like, thank God you fucking read her that book. Because she will maybe be able to comprehend this because of that book. Yeah. And so I remember having to tell her uh, what had happened. And I, I'm crying. My wife is crying. And she is like, you can tell she doesn't know how to feel about it. You know, it's so strange when someone tells you someone died. In the movies and TV shows, people are immediately like shattered. But that's truly not real. There's almost a part of you that doesn't feel 
sad right Confusion away. Confusion first. You, know? yeah, you, like, you like, almost have to get to that. Process. And it's not even like immediate, the shock. Yeah. Um, Sometimes anger before yeah. uh, emo- I mean, uh, being upset. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I say all that to say that when my dad died, she was down the street at her friend's. And we had said, you know, they, they were like, we'll keep her for the night. And so then the next morning she came back to the house and to sit her, I mean, to sit her down again, this fucking poor kid, and just say, I know we were just here and I told you this. And I, I, I my wife, we talked about it. I was like, I don't want her to think that everyone just dies. I was like, I don't want her to develop a thing of like, well, I better be careful about love because it's easier (laughs) if everyone's going to die anyways. I was like, I don't want that to happen. And to tell her, you know, you lost your grandfather and it's my dad and trying to explain, you know, it's a kid. They can't fully comprehend it anyways. But man, I'll tell you what crushed me so much. I mean, listen, as an adult, and I've been through it a bunch like you, I still don't fully comprehend it. Yeah, exactly. And then it it evolves and changes. And now you got to, now now I went through this as a kid (laughs) and I have to try to explain this to a kid when I didn't even know what the fuck that was. I still don't know what the fuck that was. I was 16 then. Yeah. I'm 48 now. There's a big difference. (laughs) Yeah. And I just trying to explain it to her. I'm and getting say, all kinds of fucking anxiety. This is happening. <laughs> I know, of course. I'm of getting course. all kinds of It's anxiety. everywhere. It's, <laughs> it's 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 fucking Dracula's goddamn biting at us. Um, but I, yeah, to explain that to her, I, I think her and my dad would have had so much in common. The more she's like aged and who she is, like the, we play games and stuff, and she shit talks, and I'm like, fuck, my dad would have loved that shit. Yeah, like that's what I taught my daughter. When she all tells time. me shit when I put something down, she just be like, ah, I wasn't too smart to do that, yeah, was it? Yeah. As a kid, oh, said thought, that. Oh, you thought that was good, <laughs> huh? That's my yeah. daughter does. I'm like, your I'm your like, grandfather oh, would love. Da- yeah, and like, they would God. gang up on me too. You know, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, tell him, Stella. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah, shut the fuck up, buddy. I I just, I just know, and I'm like, God, there's so much of you in him, like in how you respond and, and say stuff. But that's got to feel a little good too, though. Yeah, it it does. And there's you also know? this part of me that you know, you start to, uh, <laughs> this this is maybe a sort of a full circle of this conversation. But there's this part of me that's like, well, my mom died on my first birthday, so I dedicate myself to going. You know what? I'm gonna try to live this big life and do something extraordinary, whatever that is. And so here I am and in the world of, of doing stand up and acting and being like, well, there, that's, that's a unique pursuit. And the fact that I've even been able to buy groceries off of it is already, that means I crossed the finish line in terms of, no of, of getting to where I was trying to get to, no matter what happens if after that. If you're supporting that. your family off of your talent, then you are that's a the successful American dream. professional, yeah, to have a whatever, job you like. insert title here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To have a job you like, that is the American dream. So I, 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 I had that. And then, you know, when my dad passed away, I thought, you know, I I, I feel like I, I, I obviously had to leave to go. I moved to D.C. and then I moved to New York City and I moved to L.A. And once he was gone, I was like, God, I there's now this part of me. It's like I feel like I left. I feel like, you know, if he's like, oh, yeah, maybe I maybe we would have really hit it off me and your daughter. But you guys weren't here or I didn't see you. So well that, yeah, but that's, but, but it's, it's a thing that you right. just go, there isn't, there's no winning to yeah. it. You just, you look at it and you go, Oh, I don't, I don't know how you get to have, uh, all of those things. But uh, the other strange thing is that I go into stand up to, to have this extraordinary life as a dedication to my mother for the sacrifice she made, uh, only to have my dad pass away and for me to realize, oh, I was only doing this to for you. I was doing this so that you would look, so that you would go, wait, what did you say? Like, if I have this microphone and all these people are watching and the lights are pointing up here, then you're going to look up here and you'll you'll hear what I'm saying. And I, I got to say to... Obviously, we're in a pandemic. I haven't been on stage very much, but it's not the same space for me anymore. What I do is now not the same space as what it once was, where I had this, this you know, you're obviously trying to sell tickets and have an audience, but to be faced with the fact that you realize you just cared about one audience member the whole time really changes so much stuff in your mind and your approach to how to care about the thing that you were doing as a as a as an 
dedication to your mother who died and then your dad dies to realize, oh, I was doing this for you. This wasn't this wasn't for her. All right, two at things. All. You have a new audience yeah. of one, your daughter now. Right. That's the person who matters that's watching you now. Yeah. Which is what your dad would want anyway. If your dad was like, Look, I'm done watching this fucking show. I'm gonna give my ticket to somebody, it's gonna be your daughter. <laughs> Secondly, actually three things, because your dad did love what you did. He just yeah. didn't tell you yeah. like you wish he would have, but everybody else fucking came over and told you. And um also it's it's tough because I my mom didn't because my mom left our family, but your dad also made a sacrifice. Your dad was a single fucking dad with two yeah. kids for a minute, brought in uh, Aunt Connie. She's putting on fucking <laughs> um, you know after uh, what do you call it? Additional education, higher yeah. education on pause. Yeah, and then you have a stepmom, and I mean, I'm assuming that was she was a good woman. Your dad brought her in, trusted her around his kids and all that. So your mom made the ultimate sacrifice, but so did your dad. Your dad yeah. made a huge sacrifice as well. So the, I think it's cool that you wanted him to see it. I think he and he, and he obviously did. Yeah, yeah. But now. The space is different, but you should change that fucking start painting a new painting for your daughter now. Yeah. I, I mean, it, 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 really, it's funny you say it. I've started painting actually. Um, painting, actually painting. Your, painting. Uh, I do it. I do it just every come night. Here every now and then. I go to the garage, I get high, pour some wine or a old fashioned, put on some, some jazz, and I just start fucking painting. And it's, if anyone is looking, going, I need something to release. Go paint. It is so great. And don't sit there and go, was it good or bad? No one fucking cares. Matter. Just paint. Just and you'll paint. go, God, this is fun. This is it. And use your hands. <laughs> fucking finger paint. Get a brush. Smear shit. It's so goddamn uh, therapeutic. But uh, yeah, it's it, it, it really, there's a good and bad to it. To realize that you've been doing it all for this reason. There's something that clicks for you to go, well, now there's this, there's this other reason. And I will say... Um, and yes, I, I totally agree. Like, well, now there's your daughter and, and this, but I, I will say it's now the first time that I've been like, well, what if, uh, you know, what, what would you do if you're, if you're your own audience, then what would you do? Because before it really mattered this other person's thing, but what does art become if it no longer matters to you? about and any other person think is and it's just what you think is it's funny so much fun and i won't lie I, I don't know when i'll hit hit the ground running and start doing spots all the time like i used to do and get out on the road like i used to do but i am excited to see what it becomes i think it's gonna be very painful and i think it's gonna be very quiet for a lot of a lot be. of the time but i i think somewhere in there um talking about the painting somewhere in there there is a painting i like and i got to go through a lot of uh, it's shit just like to those fucking it, think but. about think about when you do headshots. They'll take eighty of them. All you're yeah. looking for is one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just need one that doesn't disgust me yeah. of my own fucking face. Please, I hope you got it in that pile. Over yeah. There. And they're like, well, this one where you're holding up your hand, <laughs> covering most of it. I'm like, that's that, the one. That's, that's it. The that's one. the one. <laughs> <laughs> I um, it's funny you say that because. You know, I just recently was passed at the comedy store, and for all these years, 22 years, I've wanted to make my dad proud, my grandma. I've wanted the world to see my name on that building, and yeah. now that I have it now, if I would have got it then, that's what I would have thought. And now all I care about is my daughter, my stepson, their kids seeing that on the wall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. So I was able to shift that, be like, you know what? Yeah. And I keep... It's so funny. I keep listening to I want to I'm going to manifest this. I want Joan Jett on this podcast. I love Joan Jett. She's an Oriole fan. There yeah. aren't many of us left. <laughs> I'd love to sit down and talk to her. We could go over an whole episode on that fucking shit squad, but I say just saying that I know I'm interrupting you, but just saying that my dad was hardcore Braves. I was watching a, a soccer game at the soccer stadium when the Braves won when the won. World Series and I mean I almost collapsed. And someone have been like, I, "You love the Braves," so I've been like, "I don't even, I, I like them." All right. <laughs> They've been like, "What are you? What are you? Like, you're pouring tears like you just pitched the last pitch to win the fucking <laughs> yeah. game, and you played for them your whole career." <laughs> and I've been like, "Ah, it's a long story to go into it," but I remember the moment they threw that pitch, and and they just needed one more out. I was just like, "Fuck!" Like it, it, it hit me hard, and I just remember those the '90s watching the Braves was. I mean, that what a team to cheer for 
in the 90s, you know? I, I keep listening to her song, Bad Reputation, and she says, you're living in the past, it's a new generation. I'm like, yeah. And I, I, I get these, I see these questions. If you could tell, which I'm going to ask you about your 16-year-old self, yeah. but I just recently realized that when I see these things that say, think back to a time you were truly happy. Yeah. My mind is trained to always go back to childhood. Yeah. Always. I'm always looking for it in there. Yeah. When I'm like, you're 48, dude, 15 years ago. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like 33, you yeah. could have been so fucking happy. Why does your mind always go to 7 to 10? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And because, I guess because before the shit show started, I was I was happy. Like, I feel like I had yeah. a good childhood up until death showed up. I was yeah. like, guess what? We're going to fuck that all up. Yeah. And it hits you. I've told this story before, but you'll. I'm going to tell you this because you'll get a kick out of this. So it's a couple like Thanksgivings ago before the pandemic or whatever. And um, I go in. It's it's actually Christmas. And I am always do a traditional thing. My grandmom was Italian. So we had the traditional foods and then we would have Italian options. So yeah. I'm going to get some shit to make some Italian food. And I go up to, there's no one in line at the the deli meat counter. So I'm like, while I'm here, I'm going to go order some cold cuts and then I'm going to shop and I'll come back and grab them. That's yeah. the move. So this older lady comes out and she's got an Italian accent. And she's like, what would you like? And I'm like, let me get some boar's head low sodium number two. Cut it as thin as you can without shaving. And she's like, okay, I'll go. I'm, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab a couple things and I'll come back. She goes, stay here, talk to me. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I start talking to her and she's she's asking me like what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, I'm getting the Italian food. You know, I start telling her that I didn't know until I started dating other girls and stuff and going to their homes that people didn't always have Italian food because every fucking relative was Italian. Like I'm an idiot. I don't figure it out. And yeah. we're going back and she's telling me her, her daughter's dating this guy and this and that. And um I go, yeah, you know, it's the older generation. I really just miss the older generation so much. And um, I, I'm telling her all about my grandma. I'm like, every time I go there, the smells and the smells. Yeah. And um, she gives me the ham, and I'm like, thank you so much. And I go, what's your name? And she goes, Carmela. And I go, did you just say Carmela? She goes, yeah. I go, that's my grandma's name. Yeah. And I get my credit card out because I named my business Stella, my daughter, and Carmela, my grandma. Yeah. Bro, I'm crying. <laughs> of course. I'm crying at yes. the belly meat cat. Of course you are. <laughs> I'm like, look at the. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just people like, wait, like, can I get some core beef? Yeah. I'm just having this fucking moment yeah. with this fucking lady hard. You know, I'm yeah. like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for making me stay. Thank you for talking to her. It's like the closest hello I'll ever fucking get from my grandma. You, like, oh you my walk God. off, tears, <laughs> snot. Is the next person funny enough right. to look at her and go, uh, I'll have what he's having? Like, are they funny? Nah. And also, is Carmella even getting that? No, bit? life is like that. Like, get the fuck out of here, asshole. Give me a half powder rose. I was get, while you're telling that story, I, I, when you were telling that story, right at the moment where she said, stay here and just talk to me for a second, that right then, I almost said to you, I almost interrupted you to say, I wonder if people know, like, that, like there's angels among us, but they are just us. Like, cause there's a moment where a guy is speeding off for getting away from you, and you're like, hold on one second, one second. Where did you get those shoes? Yeah. And that guy doesn't know he needs you to ask him that right, right then. And that moment where her just saying, stay here and talk to me, I bet you that is not all the time. It was the closest thing to a hug. <laughs> I'm ever gonna fucking get. That's the kind I, of I tell fucking my thing daughter, you put like, in a movie. You yeah. should write the down and go. This is a scene shit for really a character I'm, in I'm a open thing. Openly weeping at the fucking deli counter. Yeah. And now everyone's there. It's yeah. no one when I get there, and now there's six <laughs> fucking people, and she's by herself. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and even she's like, you got to move on, son. Get the I'm, fuck not, out I'm not her. I'm, I'm not her. Fuck. I'm not her, bud. I'm not. Put your card away. Pay at the register. I'm not her. <laughs> I just bored. I just bored for a second. Oh, shit. Dude, thank you for coming on. This has been a fucking great episode. Thank you for having me. I appreciate um, this. All right, so before you plug again, I ask everyone their first time on. Sometimes I forget. I do forget sometimes. Yeah. I forgot Nick Swartz, and I forgot to ask. We'll have to get him back to ask his 16-year-old me. But please, after what we've talked about now, knowing what you were at uh, going through at that age, uh, what advice would you give 16-year-old Rory? I... I think I would tell myself to to listen more and to genuinely listen 
not not the kind of listening that I still do actively, the kind of listening where you're just kind of thinking what you're going to say, because a lot of times our trigger is, oh, I got a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so then you wait for your timing to get it in, and you kind of miss some good shit. And I feel like, I, feel like I, I would be a different person today if instead of being so me, me, me at 16, which we all are, we're teenagers, but I wish I was less me, me, me and more... Well, you're talking, so I'm actually actively listen and ask you about you as opposed to waiting for that moment where I get to just talk about me and my myself. I think as I get older, you just get so fucking tired of that. You get so tired of of uh, the the internal. Like, I need people to know. I mean, right. I know the irony of saying it on a podcast where you just interviewed me about stuff. About this show. But you know what I mean, where yeah, it's still 100%. there when you're not on a podcast and yeah. someone's like, I didn't ask you about your dad, yeah. bro. And right. it's like, sorry, I just, I'll yeah, get some roast just... beef and some ham and turkey. <laughs> <laughs> But I, as you I, shuffle yeah. off in your fucking Adidas <laughs> yeah, exactly, slippers, exactly. Yeah. But I just, it, I, I would tell my sixteen-year-old self, like, <laughs> you know, uh, listen more and and don't be so, don't don't be so afraid of adults. Don't don't look at adults as these mega authoritative figures and start Man, to talk important. to them. I think if I didn't look at adults like that, there's a chance maybe I would open up to my dad. I think all of us sooner. did, though. We're a generation that was taught to fear and and shut up and listen and yeah. go over there and sit at the kids' table and mind yes. your business. And, yes. you know, it wasn't a very open time to, yeah. to have that. So that's great. Yeah. Um, plug whatever you'd like again, please. Yeah. Uh, Pen Pals podcast. Um, it's with Daniel Van Kirk and myself. We get letters from our, our listeners who write us about random shit, and we we get into it. It's it's not so unlike this. We dive into the funny stuff. We dive into the real uh, the real dramatic stuff as well. And so I, I would say check that out, and then physical on Apple TV Plus, and then hopefully at some point in 2022, I'll have some club dates coming but i don't know and when or website where yet. back up get that website going That's what I'm talking about all right <laughs> as always ryan sickler on all social media ryan we'll talk to y'all next week